Hey, this is Mark, aka Nectar Junkie, coming with another tutorial for you. Today we're going to focus on uh, two parts of the Nectar, pretty much. We're going to focus on the transport mode, um, the buttons that control the transport, and we're also going to focus on the fact that these buttons can be used as F keys. And what F keys are, are programmable buttons that allow you to program your Nectar to actually control basically anything that would be typed on your computer. The example that I'm going to do is after we go through exactly how to build this functionality and you can totally customize and, and personalize what the F keys, F keys do for you, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and use this technique while using the transport buttons as well to build a song on the fly. So right off the bat I want to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about in terms of control keys and that is that if I do something like control I and I'm hitting on my keyboard right now, my physical keyboard, um, I am you're going to type a control character and the letter I, and it causes uh, the ability to load a new instrument. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to use Nectar to perform that action. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use these F keys. Now these keys are the transport keys, you know, transport, start, stop, play, all of that stuff, good stuff there. Um, but if you hit this button that says F keys, and you're either in, it does it works when you're in mixer mode, it works when you're in instrument mode as well as transport mode then you get this special message to pop up on the screen and you can see here now I've programmed these already and what I'm going to show you right now is how to actually program these for yourself um, the F keys are incredibly powerful in ways that I don't even quite understand um, I'm not a MIDI expert but what I do use them for is to control these activities that I would normally use keyboard shortcuts for and so right now, if I'm holding my F keys, then you can see my <clears throat> I've programmed my F6 button, which is the loop button here. I've programmed that to open the load instrument screen. And you can see that instead of using my physical typing keyboard, I used the Nectar to uh, enact that. So <clears throat> I'm just going to cancel out of that right now. And in a second, I'm going to show you how to actually go in and program your own custom ones for whatever your favorite uh, functions that you use are. All right, so first of all, you might be wondering, where can I find the keyboard shortcuts in Reason? And of course, some of them are listed. Uh, you see the ones that have Control T, Control I that are listed in your menus. But I'd also recommend researching what the control keys that are available are for you, because here's a great one that I really love. If I hit a comma when I am in Reason, it adds a new note lane. And I found that by searching um, online for control key shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts in Reason. So what we're going to do right now is instead of hitting the uh, comma on the keyboard, Board, what I want to do is I want to program one of my F keys in order to do that. So in order to do the programming of the F keys, and there's a lot of steps here, feel free to rewind and watch the video again. Uh, it's kind of advanced, but it's really just kind of walking through um, what the steps are. Um, but the first step is, is that we are going to use this internal mode button here of all the four buttons up top. Uh, we're using internal mode, and this is where we go to program uh, internal functionality. So once you get here, the menu at the bottom, uh, you've got a button that says setup. And when you push this, a little menu shows up here, and this uh, dial right here uh, allows you to choose which aspect that you're going to do. You're going to use multiple aspects, but you start with control edit, and then you're going to wind up saving them as well. Um, when I go into the control edit menu, then what I can do here is if I hit any of the dials or faders, which we're not doing right now, we're only using the F keys, but you can use this internal mode to program actions to all of these. Uh, there's a ton of stuff in here, as I've noted before, I'm not familiar with all of the things that are in here, um, but I'm working with the F keys right now. So what I do is I actually hit the F key and my F11, we're going to program my F11 button to uh, do that new note lane activity that we just wanted to, to, um, to provide. So now I know that I am on the F key and it's highlighted. This little red uh, indicator shows me that it corresponds to my F11 key over here. And so right now um, on the left hand side of this window, uh, if you spin this dial, you can see these are all the different things that an F key can be programmed to. I mean, it's just mind boggling the extent of um, information that can be programmed for these. But the message type that we want is the one that shows the little keyboard because that is where your keyboard shortcuts are programmed. And you can see down at the bottom there is a little picture of a keyboard as well which corresponds to this third middle button here. So when we go ahead and pop that then 
on screen, then we get our macro editor. Uh, and so the macro editor is uh, will show up when you hit that little keyboard um, in here. And what it's asking to do is it's asking to either load an existing macro or to create a new macro. If you create a new macro uh, and then you hit the learn button, then any key that you type is going to wind up um, becoming recorded and then that macro would get played back if you stored it and assigned then this would you know type into the computer F G H S it performs that activity of course that doesn't mean anything for this right now and we're actually going to load in one that I had previously done um, so I'm going to cancel that out I'm going to hit the little third button to pop this macro editor again I'm going to click load and you're going to see that a bunch of um, a bunch of items that I've built in here are listed and you can see I labeled this NNL new note lane uh, because that actually shows up or four letters of that show up on the on-screen display so when you're building these you want to think what's something that can um, show up on the on-screen display to help me remember what that is so NNL means new note lane to me I'm going to click on that and then I hit OK and then you can see back down here on the on-screen display for the Nectar that now we have the macro uh, NNL that's associated or that we can potentially um, assign right here and so yes this is what I want to have assigned to this key so I go ahead and I go and I scroll down and we're, we're on this uh, um, on this fifth button here and the little menu shows up and this is when we want to actually save so I release it and now the button has become the enter button I hit enter it brings me to this menu and this menu allows you to save multiple banks of these keyboard shortcuts or programming of all the keyboard I'm using this and I'm going to assign it to my preset zero nectar one because this is what I always will use I always want that new note lane available on my F keys so I go ahead and the internal button now corresponds to the save functionality right there. I hit boom and I am good to go. I have just programmed my F key to perform that function. So when I go into any of my other modes, I should see it now. When I hit the F key button, then there you can see it. I've got NNL listed, new note lane, and now when I do this, do new note lanes to my heart's content, and I can just do that while I'm in the midst of composing my song. The other part of this tutorial is briefly talking about the transport mode because you can really control everything with your transport from right here. So remember, there's three modes, or actually four modes, uh, mixer, instrument, transport, and internal. We had used internal for programming our F keys, but we're going to use the transport mode right now. What shows up on screen relates to everything associated with your sequencer. So there are some things that I always set uh, when I'm going to be doing this, and I really build these pieces for inspiration or to get root ideas for tracks. and so. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I always turn the pre-count on, um, you know, the, 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 the pre-click. Um, I also always, and you can see that as I turn the number of bars up on the pre-count, and you can put as many bars on the pre-count as you want. I usually just use a one, uh, one bar intro. Uh, and But you can see this little light activated down here that tells me my pre is on, in addition to seeing that it's the one there. All right, and I also turn my loop on. Um, I will f most frequently start with a uh, with nine bars and but I could make it uh, 17 you see I'm adjusting with this dial right here I'm moving the right uh, indicator um, and you can also move the left indicator I'm not going to do that I was going to start bar number one um, and I always turn my click on to start because I I'm generally starting by creating a drum beat by myself. Occasionally I use the Rex loops, but I like to do drum beats by myself. Um, and then I frequently, this uh, this mode button, this last button over here, uh, this one actually controls the um, quantize record. And I am frequently a cheater quantize record user because I just don't have the best timing in the world. So uh, additionally, uh, this is kind of funny, is that um, I had created and showed you how to create the new note lane button as a function key, but I hadn't realized in a newer version of the firmware of the Nectar, there's actually functionality that does this. So these five buttons down here do things. Uh, the quantize button will quantize uh, content after you've recorded it, but hey, here's this button that is new dub, and that will actually give you a new note lane. And then there's also this new alt one, which actually is... Uh, um, it mutes out the previous versions of it if you have them in there. Um, and tap tempo allows you to tap temp. Looper, I'm going to do a different tutorial on Looper a little bit later. And uh, but that is the um, 
that's what's going on in our uh, in our transport window. And so um, I'm going to go through and the build song process. Uh, you don't necessarily have to watch, but I think it's interesting to see how I create an actual mini piece of music uh, with multiple instruments and drum beats without ever touching my physical piano keyboard. And so it's um, I've already recorded it. It's not my favorite one of these that I've ever done, but I think and so you don't have to watch it because all of the kind of training has been done in this. But I will point out in annotations throughout it what I'm doing uh, so you can actually see all the things that I've talked about here in progress. Uh, if you don't watch through it, I'll see you next time around and thanks for stopping by.